Yes, it's lovely. Oh, you're not here touching it. I'm touching it. It's delicious. Eating burritos and tacos here at the lovely NVIDIA. That's right, the Editor's Day thing. We were eating. Mark's back here from us from his little Battletech reviews. They had another truck, but it was too greasy, so we went with something solid. Mexican food. Here, where would you be? Uh, my house. Right in front of a speaker. Yes. Right. <laughs> Favorite piece of technology that they showed up, showed up there? Um, I mean... Not the card. Not the card? What the hell else? I mean, other than the 1080 Ti, right? Okay. Everything else sucks. I mean, everything else was cool. Okay, the the FCAT analyzer looked pretty sweet. Um, I think we've all been waiting for an application like that for a while. I especially like that you can overlay a bunch of different uh, d data plots um, together and sort of see, get a more comprehensive look at, at your uh, at your your metrics, and also export that. Um, you know, in full 1920 by 1080, which is going to be great for just inputting it into videos. I'm not going to have to like use a snipping tool anymore. Marking in uh, VR has always been problematic because what Fraps reads is not actually what's happening. There's, you know, a couple different runtimes, a couple different APIs going on here. Sometimes frames are doubled. Sometimes, uh, you know, there is maybe uh, if you're using Oculus or something like that, they will synthesize a frame. And there's no way really for Fraps to know that sort of thing. So NVIDIA has created an FCAT specifically for this. Uh, that allows you to take basically um, not just like a frame rate from a VR experience, but also um, everything that happens after the game engine spits out the frame to when it is actually, uh, it, it, the runtime takes it and puts it on the actual HMD for you. Basically it's going to allow you to do real testing uh, for VR, not just the frame rate that's shown in t inside the computer, but actually what's shown on the visor itself. So if there are spikes, uh, if there are frame times that are taking too long to, to appear, uh, if there's lag or stuttering or stuff, you're actually going to be able to record that. Favorite thing other than the card? Uh, honestly, I think it's the fact that more GameWorks uh, APIs are making their way to public access. Uh, what they say, it's, they're hosted up on GitHub, and uh, that anyone can get on GitHub, download some of these APIs, and start, well, bringing more indie games to more of like AAA feel with some of these things that are free now. Because one of the biggest problems people have with GameWorks in the beginning was it was closed. It was, it was a protected source. But now it's moving more to an open source. I think they, there were seven different APIs in 2017 that are being added to the, the free source code, Hairworks being one of them. Uh, Physics was what, one of the first ones they did back in like 2015. But that's what I'm looking forward to because the card's only part of the feature. I mean, if, if you don't have a good gaming program to start with or a good game to start with, who cares what your card can do? Um, the main question I had about the GameWorks stuff is are they going to support Vulkan? And their answer to that was that they will support Vulkan if the developer wants it. And they said that it's not, um, they're not the ones who decide what platforms it goes on. They just facilitate whatever the developers want. So the developer comes out and says, you know, hey, we want WaveWorks, we want Blast, that's some of the new things, uh, that's like the new part of, or the new, um, I guess, destruction modeling. Uh, we want MD Cloth, we want Hairworks and Shadow and Ansel and all this other stuff on Vulcan, then they'll make it for it. So that's pretty much it. They said that artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize game making. And I was like, how in the hell is that going to work? And then I saw their demo. They've got this, this thing called Style Transfer, where you can take a, a photo or an image or a video, and, and there it is on the screen. And then you can take a style, like, you know, Vincent van Gogh, I don't know, or Picasso, or just some style. You take another picture as a style reference, and then it will combine the two and redo the first picture in the style of the second. And this uh, will allow you to do some very stylized games. Like I just said, imagine playing through, like, a, a Salvador Dali uh, world or whatever, because they'll, they'll create the game and then they'll throw the engine at it and render it in real time. There's already some companies working on that, so that's gonna be interesting. Next up is the image upscaler. Image scaling, what it does is it takes, um, I guess, your your image, and in order to train the artificial intelligence, you give it lots and lots of high-res images, and then you take that high-res image and you give lots and lots of low-res images of the same thing. So it looks and looks and looks at lots of these, and then you throw out a new image that's low-res, and it uses all the data from learning to upscale this. And it can do four times ups upscaling, and it looks pretty damn good. So imagine taking this for like shitty textures and stuff and making it better, or I'd love to, I'd love to see people take this to, you know, to old games and then throwing all the textures through this and it would be way better than putting filters on top of those old crappy textures because you'd have new textures made from the artificial intelligence. Favorite thing from this entire thing 
was this new technology where you can take a couple different photos um, of a of, you know like a, a texture you want to have in your game. Like they did leather, they did cloth. They even can do patterns, you know, like tweed or pound suit or whatever. So you take that, you take two photos, one with a flash and one without a flash, and then you throw it into the algorithm, and it generates uh, a material that you can use, like right in your engine, like right in Unreal Engine or whatever. You have your material. It generates the normal speculars. Uh, you know, it generates pretty much everything you need. The glossy, whatever. It generates all that you need to create a material. This is going to make things so much faster for developing our game and developing, you know, your games out there as well. They shot off some photogrammetry stuff, which is uh, which is cool. It's been around for a few years. It's where you go out and take, you know, like hundreds of thousands of pictures of an area, and then you can uh, basically throw that into the computer, and the computer will say like, oh, let's calculate the depth, and let's throw the textures on top of there, and it basically renders the world. Well, they've gone to the next level with this, and they've um, run around New Zealand. 10,000 pictures of the statue you're seeing here on the screen, and uh, then it was reproduced using photogrammetry in the engine. And they also placed it here in this cove, so the cove was also created with uh, photogrammetry. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty freaking ridiculous. So that's what's going on with artificial intelligence and how they're going to apply that to games. And it's just really going to make things look a lot more realistic and it's going to streamline the process. All right, let's talk about the uh, specs. Everyone wants to know what the clocks are, how many CUDA cores we got. But the big thing that they're talking about here is the new G5X memory that uh, I guess Micron had just honed it down so that now it runs at 11 gigabits per second. Pretty freaking uh, ridiculous on the memory there. And um, it's also a 352-bit card. Also, we have uh, 224 texture units, um, 28 geometry units, and a total of 3,584 CUDA cores. Uh, 1.6 gigahertz is going to be the uh, boost clock. A lot of people were saying maybe it's going to be 1.7. They said, uh, you know, 2 gigahertz uh, overclock, no problem. And I think we'll be able to push it uh, even farther than that. And, uh, you know, let's cut over to Lucky Noob and see what he has to say about this. I found Lucky <laughs> Noob, man. You just came <laughs> off your big win in uh, Wuhan. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah, just get lucky. Yeah, just yeah lucky. So uh, what do you think about the uh, 1080 Ti for overclocking? The design was like really interesting because it's almost matched the spec of, of the Titan X at Max Pascal. Um, I think uh, hopefully it will match the performance of Titan X, and uh, they have they said they have a really interesting memory uh, that is uh, 11 Gbps. So basically, uh, 11 Gbps means uh, it's it's usually uh, probably could be have a higher overclocking headroom for uh, for the for the card. So even though it's like only 352 uh, bits of uh, memory memory bus, but hopefully it could reach like higher higher uh, bandwidth as well because of the because of the clocks. All right, man. Well, uh, good luck on setting some uh, some new world records. Yeah, sure. Oh, I'll thanks. do. Thanks a lot, man. Time for something new. It's definitely time for something new. Something that's 35% faster than a GTX 1080. Number one gaming graphics card. Something new that is faster than Titan X.